In this tutorial, we'll learn about using motion path animations in Articulate Storyline 360. Using motion paths, you can move objects around your slide. Those objects can be triggered by timeline events or by the learner. Here's a good example of a triggered animation. So we have some stair graphics that are going up and down, and we have this heart shape. Now clicking either of these two buttons will move the heart graphic up the stairs or back down the stairs. Now you can also notice that the animation always picks up where it was last completed. All right, let's look at a couple practice activities to learn more about motion path animations in Storyline. So the first thing we want to do in this first practice activity is just use the timeline to trigger the motion paths. So at a certain point in the timeline, as the timeline plays, we want each of these books to fly out of this big book. Okay, so we're going to need a custom animation for each of these books. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn off the big one because it really don't need it. And this first book, let's just bring it up over here and I'll put the other book on top of it. Now I want to work with this manager's example first just because it's the first one. So I'm going to turn off the visibility for a moment on employee. And I want to add a motion path that lets me move this right onto the shelf. And we do that by selecting the object, going up to animations, and then choosing motion path. Now you can see you have a few options here, right, for some basics, some shapes, and some custom motion paths. This example, we're just going to use the turn. Turn's a good one here. And you can see that I see this, you can see the start point for the motion path, and then you see this, this ghosted or faded version of the image or the shape over here, which indicates where that's going to end up. And all I need to do is just drag and resize this a bit to put this in place. I can move it up. Of course, I could move it anywhere, right? But we want to try to position it here on these bookshelves. All right, so that's in place. Let's go ahead and just take a look at how that works. So preview the slide. And there it goes right into place. I'm going to close it. And let's go ahead and add it for the second one. Now, a couple things we can do. We already have one motion path set up. So we could just grab the animation painter, which is found under the animation tab over here. And we can apply this motion path to our other object. So I'm going to select the motion path and turn it on for the employee book. And you can see my motion path is still active and I'm going to click on the employee. So now we actually have two motion paths, right? There's one for the book and one for uh, the other book, the other manager's book. Now, this can get a little tricky though, right? Because if they're both starting in the same point, even though I need to move this one over, right? I'm going to move the employee one over. It can get confusing really quick. Well, in Storyline 360, we can actually rename our motion paths, right? So if I turn off the employee, I can see that this is the manager. So I just come up here and rename this motion path to manager. It's a really big feature when you're working with multiple motion paths. If I look over here in the triggers panel, I can see that the name has been updated to manager. I'm going to turn on the employee. And you can see right here that the employee is still using motion path two. So I'll just come up here and let's call this one employee. So a really nice feature for just keeping track of your motion path, especially when you have you know, two, three, or four motion paths going on. All right, so now let's take a look at our file. So preview, and they both come in and land appropriately. So what I want to do is maybe I'm timing these, right? I want to time each of these books to come onto the shelf along with my narration. Well, if you're just timing the objects to appear, then we could easily just drag these out here, right? So maybe we want the employee to come out around here, around two seconds, and the first one comes at one. But what's the problem? What's going to happen here? They're not going to appear until that point in the timeline, right? So I, what the motion path can give us is that it can show the object persistent and static on the slide. And then at a certain point, we want that animation to fire. And here's how that works. I'm just going to put these back at the beginning of the, uh, of the timeline. And I'm just going to work with cue points. So let's say we want the uh, manager book to come in. I'm going to press C to add a cue point right here. So there's my first cue point. And then let's say at three seconds, I want the other empl the employee to come in. So I'm going to hit C again. So I have two cue points. Well, we can fire these animations based on a cue point. If you look over here in the triggers, right, by default, Storyline is going to uh, trigger those animations when the timeline starts, and the timeline being for that object. Well, we can change that, double click it. We want to do everything up here, right? We want to move the employee book on the employee path not when the timeline starts, but let's try 
when the timeline reaches Q point and the employee one is Q point two, so we'll just select two at three seconds. Okay. And then we'll change the manager book not to timeline starts, but when timeline reaches, and we'll use the Q point one. So the Q points are nice, right? Because then we can move those around if we need to adjust it with our animate with our narration or if we want to just customize when those come in. So click OK. And let's preview our slide again. And there's our first one, and then our second one. So the books remain persistent, right? They're always visible. And then at one or two seconds into the, in three seconds, they come on out. Then of course, we just turn the big book on, and then we could uh, have them come out from behind them. And that's how you sync motion path animations with the slides timeline. One of the benefits to syncing motion paths with cue points is that if you later move the cue point to a different time in the timeline, the motion path automatically moves to the new time. So it's an easy way to give yourself a little buffer room for tweaking the cue points without having to resync the audio. All right, so practice the tutorials, and if you have any questions, please ask in the forums. In the next tutorial, you'll learn how to trigger motion paths based on learners' actions.